Hello, this is Nils Grandelius for Chess24, bringing you game of the day from round 8 of the 2017 Norway Chess Tournament. And for this day we decided to pick Magnus Carlsen against Sergei Kayakin. Um, they have a long history, particularly their World Championship match last year, where both me and Jan Gustafsson were his Magnus Carlsen seconds. So for us, of course, this game was particularly interesting. Uh, Magnus started by playing d4, but after knight f6, he did something that he didn't do in uh, the match at all. He played c4. In the match he played knight f3 and bishop g5, some rare options. But c4, e6, which Kayakin basically always employs nowadays. Now knight c3, the Nimsu Indian defense, which is a rare guest in Magnus' opening repertoire, but also a rare guest in modern-day top chess, I would say. Especially after bishop b4, the move e3, Rubenstein variation. If the Nimsu is played at the top level, it's normally with queen c2. But e3, short castle, bishop d3 was played. And now there is a big choice for black. He can decide either to play with c5, which has always been the main line, and I think still is considered the most... The most accurate move. The idea is that you avoid the line the white plays in the game. And you allow some other things like a3 or also d5, but none of them are too scary. Still, d5 is, is very possible, very safe. I've even played it a couple of times myself. But it does allow this line c takes d5, e takes d5, and uh, knight e2. Uh, this position should uh, not be confused with the typical. Kaltzpad structure and the Queen's Gambit, which is very, very frequent at top level, because there the bishop is already on g5, and here it's blocked in on c1. Which, of course, makes this a better version for black. Still, uh, the structure is very complex, I would say plenty of play for both sides. All pieces normally stays on the board, so it's it's a good fighting weapon for both, for both colors. Uh, black played rook e8, and the idea of rook e8 is... Uh, Kind of to wait a bit. We see that after bishop d2, castling would probably also be met in the same way, bishop f8. Bishop d2, he plays bishop f8. The idea is that in this structure with the pawns here, against the pawn here, white would like to push f3, e4. But as soon as white pushes f3, black would like to counter in the center with c5. And then the bishop is a bit clumsy on, uh, on b4. It's better here, because on b4 maybe it will get attacked by a3 or... It's just more solid on f8. Therefore, this slightly strange looking bishop f8 move. Uh, Magnus decided to castle. And here is a big choice for black again. Uh, one of the main moves were a5. I mean, to stop this expansion on the queen side and also prepare to play knight a6 without having to worry about white taking it. Uh, arguably, the main line and most solid way of playing is to play c6. Again, with the possibility of a later knight, uh, I mean, later a5 and knight a6. And after f3, black doesn't really mind to waste the tempo and go c5 anyway. Now it's even better with the knight coming to c6. Uh, but b6 is also considered very, very solid and safe and normal and everything. Um, Carlsen played rook c1. Again, f3. He could play, but c5 will always be a decent reply. So rook c1 is kind of a semi-waiting move. Now c5 was played. And here actually Kayakin had a game before with a very strange looking bishop b5. And after bishop d7, bishop d3, which looks quite ridiculous. But I guess the point is that the bishop, bishop uh, belongs on b7. And if black were to go back, I guess Jobava, who was white in this game, would be satisfied with the draw. But anyway, it was some kind of, I think, blitz or rapid games. So after c5, knight f4 is definitely the main try. I think it was already played in a number of games. Uh, bishop b7, the most logical move, and now queen f3. And here, Kayakin had his first long think of the game. And... Magnus was already playing quite slowly, indicating that it wasn't part of his preparation. And here, as far as I recall, knight c6 is the 
supposed uh, equalizing option. But uh, it's not a move that is very easy to play if you haven't prepared it, or if you don't remember that you have prepared it. The point is that if white were to take, take, uh, knight takes, if you take with the queen then I can probably just take here. Or maybe even more accurate, take first and play rook ad8, and next take here. So knight takes d5. Now actually there's a trick. If you play knight takes d4 then white can play knight f6. Queen takes f6, queen takes b7 and uh, with the two bishops. He's slightly better in this open position. But instead black has the very nice move knight e5. Point is after white having to take because knight f6 doesn't work now because of g takes f6. Queen takes b7 and then bishop is hanging so white has to take back on e5. <coughs> queen takes d5. Queen takes d5, bishop takes d5. Now the pawn on a2 and the pawn on e5 is hanging, as indicated by arrows. And this is supposed to be completely fine for black. So slightly surprisingly, um, Karakin decided not to go for the principled continu continuation and the most sharp line. But instead he went for knight a6. Uh, well, the knight has some, some duties on c7, protecting the d5 pawn, and also possibly someday going to e6. But on the other hand, I mean, white's whole construction, like especially with knight here and knight here, uh, I mean, makes the d4 pawn a weakness. So it's so logical to go knight c6 attacking d4. So knight a6, I would say, I mean, although no, not a bad move, it's already a, an important concession from, from black side. Uh, and now after rook fd1, we can can conclude that white is slightly better after the opening. Uh, the problem also is that if you go knight c7 immediately, then white could very seriously consider something like takes takes and knight a4. And now the pawn is seriously weak on, on c5. And knight e6 doesn't help because white can trade it off. So knight c7 is not possible this early. Kaiken went for the most solid option. I think very true to his style. Uh, he, he took on d4, which Normally it's not something you would like to do, but he took it and played knight c7 and he's arguing that Yeah, well white, white is putting some pressure on d5 but, uh, but that's about it. There are no, not too many other active ideas uh, and in, in some sense it's true. Let's say the knight on f4 would maybe rather be on e5 The bishop on d2 would like to go to g5 and it's all not I mean, not not that clear how uh, how white is uh, making progress here. Uh, I mean, that being said, the bishop on b7 is the most the most passive light piece on the board, and the knight on c7 is not exactly very beautiful either. So, I mean, white is slightly better, but there is a, a very large degree of solidity in the black position. Uh, it's quite difficult for white to get something something major like. A move like queen h3, indicating something here. Some possibilities will just be met by g6. And uh, it seems very difficult to threaten black any further. So he went for knight bishop c2. The idea is either to play bishop b3 or bishop a4. Or also to bring the knight, knight d3 and knight d5. And another point of moving this knight here right on d3 is that it opens up the possibility of bishop g5 or even bishop f4. I mean, creating some some new options. So, Kayakin went for a very solid way. Bishop d6, improving the bishop slightly. And Magnus played... Well, a kind of mysterious looking bishop e3 move. But the point is that although black is solid, he doesn't really have anything very active to do. So white has this time to build up very slowly. Often h3 can also be played and then after a while we will see what, what to do with white, depending on how black reacts. Uh, queen d7 for example, followed by rook a d8, was a perfectly sensible way of continuing for black in the same style. But Kayakin decided to play a bit more active or a bit more straightforward with knight e4. Uh, seeing that if white were to take and play something like this, then probably even taking on 
f4 and uh, just going with knight on d5 is very solid for for black uh, or even knight e6 followed by bishop d5 might be even more solid so for white although it is definitely a serious option uh, why magnus decided to play to keep this option for later because anyway why black probably doesn't want to take on c3 yet uh, so bishop a4 threatening hitting the rook rook e7 creating some kind of disharmony in the black position bishop b3 queen d7 and now another move that i kind of like from from the white side he played h3 uh, introducing the threat of knight takes d5 uh, if he took immediately then so something like this of course bishop takes h2 would would be great for black so therefore h3 trying to create this threat this forced or not forced, but it uh, made. I can take the decision of capturing on c3. And here, uh, Magnus decided to take with the pawn, which I quite like because you get more stability on d4. You anyway didn't really have anything on the c file, and you can use your rooks act for more active purposes on the queen king side. Bishop c6, uh, knight h5, because really it's only on the queen king side that the white can play. Also creating some kind of threat like bishop h6, possibly. Uh, rook e6 was uh, expected solely of the follow-up. Now, possibly Magnus could have opted for rook e1. With the idea of uh, avoiding what happened in the game, basically. After rook g6, there is now bishop c2 with, uh, with a lot of power. And if not rook e6, then maybe bishop f4 or... Also bishop c2 next is very possible. Instead, he went for bishop c2 immediately, which is kind of inaccurate due to this bishop a4 move. Now, bishop f5 is not quite possible because bishop takes d1. Here, the real action started, you could say. Here, I mean, I thought Carlsen were to continue something like queen g4. And after knight e8, protecting everything. To take on a4, maybe. Play something like bishop f4 followed by rook e1 and try to claim a very slight plus. Well, due to the weakness of the d5 pawn and the slightly more active pieces on the king side. But it admittedly is very little and Magnus really wanted to push. Push harder and went for c4. A very interesting decision. Threatening to uh, just uh, kill black in the center. So black probably has to take d5. Still, queen g4 was possible to start with here and then d5 next. But he went d5. Now rook g6 was an excellent resource by... By Sergei. After bishop takes h7, not to take here allow, uh, because of bishop h7, but to first just capture back. And then if the knight goes, you can take the rook, and if. Yeah, there is simply nothing else, so it doesn't work. So rook g6, excellent defensive resource. Uh, and here, I think, objectively speaking, black is already kind of doing very well. Bishop d4, takes, takes, queen a4. Uh, here. Probably white should have tried. Uh, white should have probably have tried to play rook dc1 and recapture the pawn. I mean, uh, objectively speaking, but in the game he went for rook cc1, and just kind of sacrificing another pawn, trying to enter on the e file, create some something. But as we discussed uh, in the broadcast, I think we thought the knight e8 was very very solid for black. Yes. Stabilizing the bishop and overprotecting g7 and uh, yeah, just asking white what kind of compensation he has for its pawn and uh, the op answer is probably not very much. So black should be should be better. Queen takes a2 was described as like brilliant by Jan Gustafsson, but <laughs> I mean it's very uh, just for the for the greediness of the move. It looks ridiculous to take a pawn on a2 when your king is under such fire and. This, well, it seems to work, the move, tactically, but I still think it's uh, quite a strange uh, and practical decision. They took on g7 a couple of times, queen g4, king f8. Uh, queen h4 was a good move, trying to stop the, the black king from escaping. Now, the computers indicate knight e8 with a slight advantage for black but i think with especially being very low on time it's a, it's a real mess to, to to play with both colors i mean 
you have two pieces with black, but on the other hand, the rooks are quite strong on this open board and the king is vulnerable. I mean, even though there is no mate, it's still kind of unpleasant to play with such a weak king. Uh, though mat materially speaking, black is better, of course. So. Instead, queen b2 was the move. Here it was probably possible to repeat moves. Queen h6, queen h4, because king d7, queen g4 doesn't really achieve a lot. But Magnus, I'm not, not sure if he saw it or not, but if he saw it, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have chosen it. He decided to, to take on c4, most natural move. Knight e8 now instead. Say similar ideas like before to try to safeguard the king a bit. Rook e1, excellent move, inviting the last piece to the battle. Uh, here, queen f6 makes a lot of sense, takes. And here, uh, queen g7. Again, uh, this is maybe the one of the most more critical points of the game. White, if he wanted to, could play queen f5, after which there is nothing better than queen f6, and white can go back and repeat moves. But I think starting with whole, this whole c4 operation and the whole, basically the whole game from the beginning, it was clear that Magnus was not interested at all in draws. So after queen g7, he decided to play queen c2, keep the queens, although he had to go back to a passive square. Uh, here we were expecting queen g6, but queen f6 was played in. Probably queen g6 would have given black a slight, slight edge, but that being said, I mean, with only a couple of minutes each without increment, it's it's really tricky to play. Uh, interesting question though, what would happen if queen c3, queen g7, would white repeat or would he play something else? My guess is that he would play something like queen c1 just to keep the queens and then take it from there. But queen f6 was played, Magnus played rook g4, now threatening queen h7, because queen g7 is no longer possible. Uh, bishop c5, counter-attacking f2. Now if queen h7, white will be mated, or at least reduce his rook. So. Uh, rook e2 had to be played, or here he played rook e2, I mean g3, as was played later, could have been played already here with uh, ideas like rook f4, but... Yeah, with not very easy to play such a slow move with uh, with almost no time on the clock. So rook e2 again threatens queen h7. Guy can defend it with queen h6. G3 was played finally. Knight f6 bringing the knight back. Rook h4, queen g7. Now threatening to take on g3 due to the pin of uh, of the f2 pawn. And here with only a few seconds left, Carlson played king g2. To which. Kayakin, after some consideration, replied queen g5. The computer indicates that it's actually possible to take on d5, but it's really a move that... I would say no one will play this with uh, with less than a minute on the clock on move 40. It's it's just insane. And, objectively speaking, it's really not... Uh, I mean, it's it's the best move, but it's not like winning or anything. After rook g4, it's still kind of unclear. Or even queen e4. Uh, a more solid way of playing though would have been something like rook d8 with with a reasonable position for black. Maybe slightly better, but probably just unclear. Instead, queen g5 was played, and after some consideration, my, uh, and I mean after getting a lot of more time as well, Magnus finally found this queen c3 move. Introducing threats like rook e5 or rook f4. And also hinting at the possibility of some rook, some queen. Queen h8. Here, uh, Kai can fought for a very, very long time. And finally, he made a losing mistake, surprisingly. <laughs> uh, first of all, it was probably not possible to take on d5 with check, which is the first thing that comes to mind, because king h2, queen g5. Rook h8, like in the game, knight g8, rook e5, threatening to take on c5, queen g7, takes, 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 king e8, queen c6, picking up the rook, and after king e7, yes, the calm move, rook e4, and with the queen here and the rook here, it's simply not possible for black to survive. The best move in the position seems to be the move queen g7, uh, trying to, again, safeguard the king. Uh, after which I would guess white will reply something like either d6, sacrificing the pawn, or 
something else like I mean maybe it's a threat to take on d5 but like any any random move maybe even a move like rook a2 could be considered in order to stop rook d8 it's really a very complex position I think the engines are claiming a slight white edge but over the board as in the last uh, 10 or so moves I would say that it's just a complete mess uh, instead bishop d6 was played uh, to me it's not entirely clear what Karakin missed, but it turns out that after rook h8, knight g8, rook e4, with a simple idea of rook g4 and rook takes g8, there is no defense. Uh, one problem is that after queen takes d5, there is queen f3 followed by rook takes g8. And uh, if the queen moves, let's say some somewhere, then you can just play rook g4 and the rook is hanging, the knight is hanging. It's just a col complete collapse. So, rook e4, in fact, just introduces a threat that cannot be parried. Uh, after thinking for some time, Kaiken decided to play queen g7. And now, a very nice tactical shot was rook takes g8. Uh, after queen takes g8, Carlsen's idea was to play queen f6, the most accurate move. Rook g4 also wins the queen after queen h7, rook h4. But queen f6 just gets it in a better version after, let's say, bishop c5, rook g4. When black lost his stability and the pawn can just run. Queen h7, now even d6. and It's not possible to stop the threat of a queen e7 mate. Uh, after queen f6, the move queen g6 to protect the bishop doesn't work because of the triangulation with queen h8 check, queen g8, queen h6. And the bishop is falling and rook g4 just wins the game. So Kayakin took on g8 with the king and after rook g4 resigned. So what can we say about the game? Uh, well, a very complex first part of the middle game. Where after this decision knight a6 and c takes d4, white was pleasant, but maybe not more than that. Uh, they both played pretty well this whole part uh, until uh, Magnus decided to really spice things up with this uh, move c4 instead of a more sane alternative like queen g4 followed by bishop f4. And this c4 and after this it was incredibly sharp, they were quite low on time but objectively speaking the idea is quite dubious but the position is maybe not that easy for black to defend over the board. And after the greedy move queen takes a2 the position seems to be balanced objectively I would say or just very unclear. Knight e8 was uh, was the was the solid way for black. Queen a2, this was forced, queen h4, and this all might, yeah, just basically a mess. It's, I don't think it's fair to say that either white or black is better here, but uh, maybe the white position is slightly easier to play over the board, especially low on time. Uh, they played, this was all kind of reasonable, and of course the game was decided with uh, on move 41, when in a slightly pressured situation, Kai can surprisingly, after thinking for a very long time, just blundered with bishop d6. So, uh, an interesting fighting game, not very correct, but uh, on the other hand, very exciting. And I think for Magnus, it's it's great to win a game like this. And for Kayakin, well, those kind of games are the games that happen from time to time. You have something very sharp and you miscalculate it. it Unfortunately, happens to all of us. <laughs> so, uh, this was uh, Nils Candelius for Chess24, and uh, see you again tomorrow for the last uh, round of the Norway Chess.